Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over a build that would definitely be able to get you through the new DLC when it comes out. It seems like it should be released in the next few months, even though they didn't give out any exact release date or anything about it, but anyways, the setup throws out two types of damage, so regardless if they're resistant to one, you have another one to fall back on. It's got ranged attacks, tons of knockback, lots of damage with a single hit, it just checks off all the boxes for practical use. So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the main sources of damage is going to be coming from the Watchdog staff. All of its regular basic attacks deal physical damage, but the Ash of War in it deals purely magic damage. And the best part about it is you don't have to invest any points into intelligence or anything really to increase its damage. The Ash of War and it scales with the weapon's level. So even if you just have the stats required to use it, but you have it maxed out, it'll still hit like an absolute truck. Additionally, it only costs 15 mana per use and it's got a decently fast casting speed. So you can spam this on bosses to make the fights a lot easier. It does kind of cheese the game a little bit, but hey, when you get stuck on one enemy, like Malena, for a solid two hours straight, like most of us have, you don't really care at that point how you get it done. As long as it's done and you can move on with what's left of your sanity. And this brings up another great feature about it. Enemies like Malena or NPC invaders that dodge incoming projectiles won't roll out of the way when this comes straight towards them. The Ash of War alone can hold itself up against almost all enemies except when it comes across magic resistant ones. Then the damage obviously drops off drastically. Now you'd think this would be a huge problem but it's not at all. <laughs> The build's got two different types of damage for situations like that. Since the Watchdog staff is primarily strength focused, we can just toss on another strength weapon to double down on its physical damage. And what better option to pick than the Giant Crusher? The best strength weapon in the entire game, no question about it. Having an S scaling with the heavy affinity placed on it, it reaches 911 attack power one handing it. Using the Watchdog staff in our other hand with another 748, power stancing these weapons is ridiculous. Smaller guys get crushed with one hit, Bigger guys get stun locked until they drop, and the Ash of War on the Giant Crusher, Lion's Claw, doesn't just slam people into the ground while doing even more damage, but it also breaks a boss's stance very quickly, leading up to a critical hit. When the brains for magic isn't working, it's hammer time. That's the whole gist of the weapons, basic attacks for every regular enemy in the game and use Ashes of War for bosses. I mean, you can basic attack bosses as well, it still does a really solid amount of damage, but it just makes the fight much quicker and easier. Finishing with that, let's take a look at where you can find these. So the Watchdog Staff can be found in the Rhodes Ends Catacombs in Liurni of the Lakes, pretty early into the game which is a nice bonus. From the Sight of Grace, head straight through the catacombs until you drop down from the second ledge or set of stairs. Smack the wall and walk through it. You'll find the Staff laying on a corpse for you to pick up. How great is that? You don't even have to fight a boss or anything difficult to get it. Now for the Giant Crusher, this one's similar to the Watchdog Staff. You'll find this in a carriage directly south of the Outer Wall Phantom Tree, Sight of Grace in Liondell. A usurated tree spirit pops out of the ground, but you don't actually have to fight it. You can just open the chest, take the hammer, and run away. It's a little odd you can get such powerful weapons without having to kill any strong enemies or bosses. Like, I'm not complaining or anything, I personally enjoy just grabbing my stuff and leaving as soon as possible with no stress. But anyways, getting the Ash of War Lion's Claw is a bit of a different story though. You're gonna have to reach Fort Gale in Kaelid and kill a Lion Guardian to be rewarded it. If you can kill Margit, the first boss before you get into Stormvale Castle, you'll be able to handle this fight easily. However, if you are struggling, you can safe spot him from the ledge with the Watchdog's staff. Moving on, the weapons are strong enough by themselves, but we can make them a lot better with the help of some talismans. And not just that, they also increase the build's overall performance in a couple of ways. The main one that stands out the most has got to be the Shard of Alexander. It increases the damage of Ashes of War by 15%, so Lion's Claw and the Magic Attack on the Watchdog Staff are going to be hitting much harder. There's no downsides to it at all, except for having to complete the Iron Fist Alexander questline, which can take some time to progress through it, but in the end, it's completely worth it. Or is it though? <laughs>
Another very important talisman that's an absolute must-have is the Great Jar's Arsenal. It boosts our max equip load by 19%. Without this, you're going to be fat rolling or spending over 30 levels in endurance just to regular roll. I don't know if you guys notice this or not, but these weapons we're using weigh a ton. One of them's the heaviest weapon in the game. On the bright side though, getting this is a lot easier than the previous one. You'll have to defeat three invaders that can be found just outside of the Colosseum in Kaled. You summon them one at a time so you don't just end up getting jumped. I wouldn't recommend doing this at the start of the game because for really low level characters, this fight will feel impossible to win. On top of that, you'll need this for when you're dual wielding weapons. Having just the watchdog staff equipped, you'll still be able to fast roll without the help of the Great Jar's arsenal. And the other weapon we use, the Giant Crusher, can be obtained in the mid game. So after you get both of the weapons and level up a bit, then you should give it a shot. You'll have a much better chance then. While you're leveling up, you can get the third talisman, the Magic Scorpion Charm. This increases all magic damage by 12%. In other words, it's gonna boost the damage of the Ash of War on the Watchdog's staff. Unlike the other ones, this comes with a negative to it. While doing 12% more magic damage, we also take 10% increased physical damage. Sounds horrible, but it really isn't. The armor we use negates this effect, so it's nothing to worry about. To get this, you're gonna have to progress through Preceptor Celevis' questline. This is why I said while you get the Magic Scorpion Charm, you can level your character up. Grinding for runes can get pretty boring, so doing side missions to get the same result and some nice gear is gonna feel a lot more rewarding. Anyways, since the armor we're using cancels out the negative effects of that talisman, we're kinda left with no armor now. Again, normally this would be a huge issue, but with that fourth talisman slot, we're gonna be using the Dragon Crest Great Shield, which reduces all physical damage taken by 20%. So this kinda acts as our armor now, and it actually works really well. Obviously, don't try to just face tank stuff, this is not that kinda build, but it does allow for mistakes though. A really nice thing about this is like before with the weapons, you don't have to kill any difficult boss to get it. However, you will have to reach the Halig Tree, more exactly the Drainage Tunnel Site of Grace. Don't worry, it's before you would fight Milena. So make your way outside, turn left, and follow the branches all the way doing a bit of parkour until you're able to jump onto a rooftop. You'll see an opening and want to go down it. There's going to be a bunch of bugs guarding the chest, so it would be better to take them out first. You could try to run by them and grab it quickly, but there's a good chance you will die from their bombardment. With the talismans out of the way, let's take a closer look at the armor. You may have seen before that we're using the entire Spellblade set. It's very light, so this helps us save some levels in endurance, but since it's light, it doesn't offer that much protection. Really, it's only able to cover most of the negative effects of the Magic Scorpion charm. And I didn't just go with this armor because it's light or looks kind of good? I guess that's more of a personal preference, but regardless, it has a passive bonus to it. Each piece of the set increases the damage of magic or cold related Ashes of War by 2%. In total, we get an 8% damage boost for the Ash of War on the Watchdog staff. It may not seem like a lot, but every little bit counts, especially with this just being a passive buff that not many armor sets or pieces come with in general. It's even easy to get. All you have to do is kill Godric and then Roger, one of the NPCs, will arrive at the round table. After speaking to him and passing some time, he'll then just die and you can pick up the entire set from his corpse. You don't have to do a whole lot, you literally just have to wait him out. There's nothing else to the armor since we're just using an entire set for the buff it gives and the small amount of protection it offers. Now, something that's a lot more impactful has got to be the Flask of Wondrous Physic. The best tier you'll want to get for this is the Magic Shrouding one, increasing all magic damage by 20% for 3 minutes, again, just boosting the damage of the Ash of War on the Watchdog's staff even further. There's a lot of things helping this weapon out, so you know it's going to be good. Then the other tier isn't as important, you can grab any other one you want, it's not going to make a huge difference. But for me, I'm using the Opaline Hard tier. It increases our armor by 15% for 3 minutes as well. I personally just like being tanky in most of my builds, I'm not too fond of getting 3 or 4 shotted just so I could roll faster or do a bit more damage. Without this, we basically have a medium amount of armor, and with this, it's like wearing heavy armor. This option is up to you, and like I said, it won't make or break the build. So to get these, the Magic Shrouding tier is rewarded after defeating an Avatar boss that can be found at the Minor Erd Tree, northeast in Liurni of the Lakes.
For the Opaline Hard tier, you're gonna have to do the same thing, except this avatar boss is at the Minor Erd Tree in Dragon Barrel. He's also a lot stronger, so you can come back to this later on, since it's not a must-have item, but more of a nice bonus. Last but not least, let's go over the most optimal stats for this setup. The bare minimum needed is 60 strength, 10 dexterity, and 24 endurance to use both the weapons and be able to medium roll. You'll also want to get 54 vigor because having a high health pool is generally a good idea, unless you're a speedrunner that can beat the game without getting hit. The most you'd want to get up to is 60 and not go past it because it doesn't do much for us after that. Then 16 Mind, giving us a total of 100 mana so we can use the Ash of War Lion's Claw 5 times or the Watchdog Staff Ash of War 6 times. I found this to be the bare minimum needed because you don't want to go through too many mana flasks during a boss fight and you also don't want to have too many mana flasks in comparison to health flasks. And lastly, I went all the way and grabbed 99 strength because a giant crusher scales amazingly well with it, and there's not much else we can do with the leftover points. You could put some into vigor, mind, or even faith if you want to use an incantation to buff yourself. However, I wanted the damage to match the watchdog staff so they both become very dependable weapons for any given fight. Now if you want to match the stats exactly, start with the hero class. If you use a different one, they're not going to be the exact same and you'll definitely end up losing some points in strength, which isn't that bad because, as you saw, we have an overkill amount in it. Additionally, here's the entire build with all the items and stats if this makes it easier for you to copy. If you guys found this video enjoyable, be sure to check out my Guts theme build. It just decimates bosses easily. Thanks for watching everyone.